astronomy and astrophysics has made a big impact on human thinking. Our institute has a strong presence in the field of theoretical astrophysics as well as experimental astronomy. The astronomy group was very small. There were some people in the lab, there were a few people with a theory background, but interestingly, no one was actually trained in astronomy. And I think consciously, perhaps Radhakrishnan brought in people with a physics background or even an engineering background and so on. And he proceeded to build this astronomy group in his own unique way. We have four different paths in which the astronomers have worked. The one is the theory astrophysics and the observational astronomy in which people used telescopes built around the globe to answer questions that are of astronomical importance and to their interest. And there was another path in which we built and developed our own instruments to find answers to our own questions that were bothering us. And then there was also a fourth path in which we developed algorithms and methods of imaging with these instruments. I am a theoretician. I can give ideas to model something. Like you see something and you are trying to explain it. So you have to give some suggestion or idea that what could be the reason. So my part comes there. Some of the questions right now that I am interested in is the, the relation between the gas in the galaxy and the circumgalactic medium. So the gas goes out of the galaxy and fills up um, becomes a part of the circumgalactic medium and then some of the circumgalactic medium then sort of condenses and rains back on the galaxy again forms stars. So it's like a it's like a water cycle that we have in our atmosphere we also have a gas cycle. We need to understand that in order to understand the evolution of galaxies and there's a lot of interest and the focus all over the world now because of some new instruments that have been uh, sent up to study this particular feature in the last few years. My research area is astroparticle physics. This field deals with the particles which are coming from outer space. Particles could be photons, the particles of light. It could be neutral particles called neutrinos. So these particles bombard the surface of the earth and there are detectors which are recording these particles. The Mauritius Radio Telescope is a non-coplanar array. It's like imagine you have a specs and this specs is very flat. Whereas if I had put all these different parts of the lens at different distances from your eye, you would have had a very distorted view of the image. So in a similar fashion, we built the two kilometer array and the entire array was not at one height. They were at different heights. So imaging with such a telescope was a challenge. And it was really a great work of very bright students. During the late 70s, RRI had started building radio telescope near Gavri Bidunur. This was a low frequency radio telescope working at 30 megahertz or a wavelength of 10 meters. The unique thing about the, the, this telescope was once you got all the hardware and uh, software working, you could image the entire sky in one day's observation. And uh, it is a major contribution that produced several PhD students uh, using this facility from this Garibunar Observatory. Murchison Whitefield Array was a project which was conceived by the astronomers from MIT and Harvard. And Raman Research Institute became a partner institution wherein we contributed to lots of ideas of how to use the data from the MWA to analyze them. Developing digital hardware, developing required firmware, software, they went to the Australia installed them and made them work and they are, they are continuously working even today. 
In the last decade, I have been working at the CMB, the Cosmic Microwave Background Distortion Lab. And one of the most important problems is to look at the 21 centimeter emission from hydrogen atoms from early universe. And Raman Institute, the SARAS, that is the shaped antenna receiver for measuring the radio background, was the first instrument which achieved the sensitivity. And we built one of the most innovative designs of having a radio telescope floated on the water. It was one of the lakes uh, that we spotted here in Sharavati backwaters in Karnataka, where this experiment uh, was deployed. And the reason for doing that is a lot of contaminations that come in the data because the way antenna looks at the ground are completely eliminated by floating an antenna on the lake. And actually it became the first radio telescope again to do so. You don't even know what is that lakes, it, any kind of creature may be there. But still uh, we used to go and uh, make the systems uh, switch on and uh, give for night observations. Another experiment called Edges Collaboration based in US had claimed a very anomalous detection of this 21 centimeter signal that people across the globe are looking for. The problem with that detection though was none of the standard theories were able to explain how a signal can arise. So all the standard models were really failing and people needed very exotic physics model to explain that. So the entire world was really needing a second confirmation whether it's true or not. So in the light of that result, SARS-3 was uh, conceived and deployed and after taking some uh, 100 hours of data and uh, analyzing it, we were able to conclusively refute the anomalous claimed detection that was there by EDGES collaboration. And therefore, this result kind of restored our confidence in the standard model of cosmology. In order to complement SARAS ground-based and now water-based activities, we proposed an experiment called Pratush, uh, which will eventually fly in an orbiter orbiting around the moon. And the reason we do this is because there is good reason to believe that the far side of the moon, so the part of the moon we do not see, is very radio quiet. Pratush was proposed by our group to the Indian Space Research Organization. It's a huge team effort. Really, it takes expertise from very different domains to bring an experiment, deploy, analyze the data, bring up statistical inferences, and so on and so forth. And these antennas are again in-house built in the mechanical engineering workshop with the expertise lies right here. Once you have built an antenna, what do you do next? You have to go and test its performance. And for that, we have a dedicated field station called Gauri Bidnor Observatory, located around 80 kilometers north of Bangalore. Again, we have a very dedicated set of staff there who help us carry out these measurements. This set of experts have worked right from the very basics of radio astronomy, starting with the days of UT radio telescope to GMRT to a lot of experiments at RRI. So really with the help of these experts, it's really possible to build a scale of an experiment that we are working on. We have taken up development of an instrument called an X-ray polarimeter, which would give us a new view of the universe, measuring a polarization of X-ray sources. These kind of instruments are extremely useful where there is a requirement of having very high sensitivity observations for astronomical sources. These things require a lot of time and an institutional support which is unconditional for very, very extended period. This actually kind of has a lot of prospects, for not only for students as well as, you know, for postdocs to learn the new technology in India. In a lab, when you develop an instrument, you can keep modifying it, repair it when it goes bad. But that is not the case in the case of space instrumentation. Once it is launched, that is gone from our hand forever. You have to make it work in the first attempt. Mechanical fabrication requires, you know, skills that mechanical engineering, you will learn about it. Then there is a lot of electronics, data processing that requires skill on softwares and electronics development. So people from different, you know, environment, different uh, background come together to, you know, build this kind of project. The focus of my research throughout my journey has been on some of the most energetic sources in the universe which are popularly known as blazars. They are so bright that we can observe them in optical even from small 
telescopes on ground. I have loved my journey so far in RRI and it has helped me to find a researcher in me in a much better way. It's not like there'll be groundbreaking discoveries every day, but like these incremental steps that we take every day that happens in every lab in a discussion meeting or a coffee or over a lunch or over the classic lunchtime walk. And I feel in a and that's that happens in this incredibly wonderful and exciting manner and I'm just glad I'm here I suppose.